Hey everyone, here we are for episode three of Cooking with Beer with Chris. Today we have a delicious menu for you. We're cooking a midnight stout braised ribs with tangy coleslaw and a creamy mashed potato. Sounds delicious, let's get started. So here we are back in the Lakeside Brew Pub kitchen. First step is to crack a beer and uh, join me in uh, cooking with beer. I am drinking our Blood Moon. It's a blood orange sour recently uh, launched in the LCBO. Um, like the name suggests, it really is sour. And uh, for those that love things like sour candies, um, you'll probably love it. Uh, for those of you that are just sort of getting into the sour beer uh, market, it's a really nice entry-level sour. It's not too sour, it's not too strong. Um, it's really delicious. It's amazing on a patio in the summer and uh, a really great isolation beer. So uh, cheers everyone and uh, let's get started on cooking. First up, is to get the ribs prepped and in the oven. So today I'm actually cooking with side ribs. Um, it's a cheaper cut than um, your typical back ribs, um, but if you you know flavor them well and cook them nice and slow, you can still get a ton of great flavor. And what we're going to do first is create a uh, a nice dry rub for the ribs. Silver bowl, some chili powder, some smoked paprika or paprika as uh, Canadians would say cayenne pepper maybe not a whole tablespoon I quite like spicy though so why not we're gonna add some cumin these are actually cumin seeds they'll uh, with the slow cooking we're gonna be doing they're gonna cook down um, so you don't need to worry too much about you know, grinding them up prior. Um, same with some fennel seeds. Little bit of cinnamon. For this, I'm only doing a teaspoon. Um, cinnamon adds some great depth of flavor, but it can be a little overpowering. So I don't like too much of that. And uh, actually the same with some clove. So just a teaspoon of clove in there. And then I love to cook with turmeric. Um, it's got great health benefits, great flavor, it adds amazing color. Um, so I'm going a full tablespoon of turmeric. And then pretty generous with some salt and pepper. So, you know, a few good pinches of salt. Four or five, probably. Don't need to worry too much uh, about doing too much and then the same with some pepper. For those of you that saw episode one, note that I, uh, I found the salt and pepper and uh, we're good. Got all the dry ingredients in my bowl so I'm just going to give them a loose mix with the hands. Make sure it's all mixed in nicely. Give it a smell. Yeah, so you can really smell everything coming through. The smoked paprika, the turmeric, delicious. You'll get the fennel and the cumin seed flavors coming out once it, once the cooking starts. And for this, we're just gonna pour the rub, sprinkle the rub over the ribs. So I'm gonna use about half on either side, pat it down. Okay, flip them over, and then use the rest of the rub on the ribs. This is going to be the base of the uh, flavor on the ribs, the sauce. It's going to really ingrain itself in the meat um, and the fat and the barbecue sauce that we'll be making. And uh, it becomes it's so important. So once we've got that rub, um, we're going to put it into our tray. So very simply, lift it up into the tray and make a little bit of space here. All of this rub that's on your chopping board, you don't want to go to waste. Um, in hindsight, and you know, we, 
you know I'm not a professional. In hindsight, would have been great to do this as we go um, in the tray. That's, uh, so let's just mix it over there. It doesn't all need to go onto the ribs. It's gonna be where we create our barbecue sauce. Dry rubs on the ribs. That means a great time for another sip of Blood Moon. Hope you guys are keeping with me here. The next step is to make the uh, marinade or sort of the future barbecue sauce. And this is gonna really be the braising liquid. So this is what we're gonna braise the, uh, the ribs of tomato paste. Um, and we're gonna do this in the same bowl that we were using earlier. Um, I like to make less washing up for myself. Okay, number two. Again, I'll say that uh, really the quantities of the rub and the marinade, you don't need to be too precise. Um, this is what I love about cooking. You can really just use what you have, um, go by some your own taste, go by your own flavors, and uh, you don't need to stick to a recipe too much for this. So, you know, if you don't have something or you really like a flavor or don't like it, Sub it in or out, not a big deal. Next step, we're gonna add uh, some chopped garlic. So I've got four sort of small to medium sized cloves here, and uh, we're just gonna slice them up nice and fine. Again, don't need to chop like a professional chef here. Um, these are gonna cook down and eventually disappear. So four cloves of garlic in. I've then got something that um, you guys might not be familiar with the name. It's uh, Worcestershire sauce. Now, I appreciate that you know a product called Worcestershire sauce. Um, this is a great moment for me to stop, take a step back, and do some education on the English language. The first step is forget what it looks like. Forget what the word looks like. It might look like Worcestershire, but I'm telling you, it's three syllables, Worcestershire. 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 Okay, enough of that. Uh, I've got 75 mils here. Again, if you really love Worcestershire sauce or hate it, you can do more or less, but I've got 75 mils. In it goes. And uh, next on my list is some English mustard. I'm gonna have to run and get a teaspoon. Bear with me. Teaspoon, okay. Two heaping teaspoons of English mustard. Um, this is Keen's hot mustard. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with it. Okay, I love English mustard. Uh, nothing to do with the name, I promise. Um, next up is some apple cider. So I'm just gonna open that. By the way, while I'm doing this, um, well, 25 mils of apple cider. Okay. And when I say apple cider, I really mean apple cider vinegar. Okay. That's great so far, but time for another sip. Excellent. We have three more ingredients into our sauce or marinade. Um, first one I'm gonna do is just onion. Going a little bit out of order here, not a big deal. I'm just gonna put these into the pan uh, with the ribs. They're gonna cook down nicely and add a ton of flavor yet uh, later for what's gonna become our barbecue sauce. Penultimate ingredient, we have our ginger. Um, 
fresh ginger. You could use powdered ginger if you want, just a couple of teaspoons. Um, I love using fresh ginger, it adds a slightly different flavor, a bit more heat, um, and just, it's really fresh. So, I'm gonna add um, a, a large thumb-sized piece. So, you know, this is a short, fat thumb, but uh, we're gonna do this. I personally leave the skin on. Um, it melts away, no issues, so, and I just grate it. So, grate the ginger on a really fine, um, sort of coarse grate. Is that a term? A grate? I'm not sure. A little tap. Awesome. Really creates a nice little mince. Uh, of the ginger and that can just go into your marinade and then stir that in. Okay, today I'm using Midnight Stout. It's an oatmeal milk stout. Um, you could use other stouts, you could use um, other beers. I recommend something that's nice and malty. Um, our Whistling Paddler would be fantastic but uh, today I thought I'd use Midnight Stout. It's got all those dark roasted chocolatey coffee flavors um, and it's going to add a really nice dynamic to what's going to turn into our barbecue sauce. So for this I'm going to use the whole can. So crack that open and pour it in. Some would say I picked the perfect size bowl for that. Smells delicious. Okay, now is a great time to do a little bit of a tidy up. So I have another sip of beer. And it's time to pour the marinade and the braising liquid um, over your ribs um, and fill the tray. So you can go right over the top, around the sides. Make sure to scrape it all out all the flavor you want to get from uh, all those spices and ingredients you want into your ribs so don't leave anything behind cover your tray with tin foil and place into the oven at 375 degrees fahrenheit for one and a half hours take out your ribs every 30 minutes to give them a stir flip them over and add a second and then a third can of Midnight Stout. This process helps keep all of the flavor and the moisture locked in so your ribs are tender and delicious. Holy hops! Midnight Stout beer's beer braised ribs are back in the oven for the final 30 minutes. Uh, so now is a great time to crack your second beer and to uh, start prepping your sides. So first of all, I'm moving on to an Astrolab IPA, um, it's a session IPA, nice and juicy, still got some bitterness, but not as much as say our class five IPA. Um, I really enjoy this and it's great to, to drink with rich foods, which is why today I'm pairing it with a Midnight Stout beer braised barbecue ribs. Delicious. Time to prep our coleslaw and our mashed potatoes. First step, I want to get those potatoes uh, on the stove so they get cooking. We got 30 minutes for the ribs. Uh, these will take about 20 to 30 minutes till they're uh, completely done. Today I'm using Yukon Gold potatoes. You can peel them if you like. Um, I personally don't peel my potatoes for mash um, unless they sort of have a really thick, dark skin. Potatoes are diced into some hot water for about 30 minutes. We get on to making our tangy coleslaw. Add the natural Greek yogurt grainy French mustard, cider vinegar, 
and stir all the ingredients together. Then you shred your cabbage. Crumble it into the dressing. And mix it all together. Have a little taste. And season. Stir once more and then put it in the fridge until the rest of the food is ready. Potatoes are nice and soft, so we're gonna start mixing in our ingredients to make these delicious, creamy, um, and then finish with a nice crispy top. Start by adding some salt and pepper, then cube and add your butter. Add the sour cream. And the English mustard or horseradish if you like. Get those arms working and start mashing. Make sure to have a little taste. A swig of beer. And then spoon your potatoes into an oven-proof dish. To make them extra crispy, score your potatoes with a fork and then put them in the oven or under the grill for 5 to 10 minutes. 1 hour 30 minutes is done, ribs are out of the oven. Let's uh, peel back this foil and uh, see how they're doing. Careful with the steam. Uh, you can now get the smell of the fennel, um, the cumin seed. The ribs are nice and tender. Um, you can tell by just picking them up, they're going to fall apart if you pick them up too much, so that's fantastic. The braised ribs are out of the oven, the mashed potatoes are in the oven, and the coleslaw is in the fridge. So we're pretty much almost done. Um, and at this point, if you wanted, you could just eat the ribs as they are. You could see that they're almost fall off the bone, um, and they would be delicious. But I like to uh, finish them off on the barbecue, uh, just to give that nice charred outside um, that you know, makes us think of some. Very simply, uh, time to take the ribs out of the braising dish and put them onto the barbecue. I like to give them a turn in the liquid, uh, in that barbecue sauce, and then straight onto a grill on a nice high heat. When you're happy with the level of char, flip them over and cook for an equal amount of time. When the ribs are done, put them aside and let them rest while we finish off our Holy Hoppin' barbecue sauce. Simply add 250 milliliters of water, stir, and heat up so you have a nice hot smoky barbecue sauce to add to your midnight style braised barbecue ribs. Midnight Stout braised barbecue ribs with a mustard mash and tangy coleslaw. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you give it a try. What I'm really trying to do is show that you can really have some fun cooking with beer um, and what better time to do it while we're, than while we're socially distancing. So if you don't mind, I'm going to tuck in. But um, I really hope you guys try some of these recipes and please let me know what you want to cook or what you want to see me cook for uh, future recipes. Cheers. It's got a really nice barbecue spice to it. I can taste the cumin, I can taste the paprika coming through. Um, it's delicious. You can see the, the ribs are just falling apart and it's a great recipe to do with uh, a cheaper cut of meat.
potatoes add a really nice creamy backbone to the whole dish. Cut some of that richness from the barbecue sauce. The mustard flavor is amazing. And the coleslaw, because it's not made with mayonnaise and it's with a yogurt, it's, uh, it's really light and refreshing and tangy. I paired this today with our Astrolab Session IPA. Um, the bitterness and the hoppy aroma balances really well with the whole dish. Thanks again for watching everyone. This was episode three of Cooking with Beer with Chris. And holy hops, this was a delicious meal. Cheers.